Hi everyone, Anthony Morganti here. In the past, I've done several videos demonstrating a little trick you could do with the radial filter. In the past, I've also done several videos demonstrating range masking. In this video, I'm going to combine those two things together and add a little twist to it, showing you how you could adjust a very specific part of your image with a range mask. For this demonstration, I have this image. It looks like it's a giant tree, but it's actually a little 12 inch bonsai tree that I took a close up image of. And what I'd like to do is I'd like to add texture to the bark of the tree. So if I go to the basic tab and I take the texture slider, move it up, it kind of looks nice, but it's adding texture to the quote grass in the foreground. That's actually moss in the foreground because it is a bonsai tree. I don't want to add it to that moss. I just want to add it to the bark. Well, what we're gonna do is we're gonna get the radial filter. Now, if you've seen my videos on this before, you know exactly what I'm going to do. If you haven't, what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw the filter totally off the image. And when you do that, and you don't have the invert checkbox checked, it's going to act as a global adjustment. Let me try to show you. I have right now exposure all the way down. And if I go off the image and just draw a tiny little radial filter there, you'll see it affects every single pixel of the image. I have exposure all the way down. Let me reset that. So we still have this radial filter here. Now any adjustment I do will affect every single pixel. Well, that's no better than the adjustments I do like in the basic tab, right? I want to adjust just the bark on that tree. So this is where this range mask is going to come in. So what I'm going to do is, first of all, let me go and I'll take texture and I'll put that up and you can see how it's affecting every pixel. It's affecting the moss in the foreground. I'm going to turn it way up for a second just so you could better see it. Now I'm going to get that range mask and we're going to get a color range mask. Now I've demoed this before, but the little twist is I've only shown this one little thing in one video. Typically you would get that color range mask. You would get the eyedropper and you would click once somewhere and get a color and it's going to apply then a mask so that your adjustments only affect that color. What if you want to get a range of colors? Well, what you could do is you could just click and drag with the eyedropper tool. So I'm going to get a range of colors. I'm going to click with the left mouse button, hold it in and drag out. And you see how I'm drawing out this rectangle. I'm getting a range of colors right there. I'll let go. Now you may not see it. Let me turn the overlay on. I'll hit the O key. You see how the red is only affecting the tree. It's not affecting the moss in the foreground. Let me better show you. I'll take exposure. All the way down. You can see how it's just affecting mainly the tree. So our adjustment now is confined to just the bark of the tree. And now I'll put this tool away. I'll put the eyedropper away. And then I could better adjust now. I any adjustment I do will just be to the bark of the tree. So I could turn clarity up. Um, maybe I want to add a little exposure, take a little exposure away, whatever. See how it's only affecting the bark of the tree. So that's a little trick you could do uh, with this uh, radial filter. Again, it really comes in handy uh, if you put it off the image and then you use masking, the range mask. In this case, I use color, but in some cases, the luminance mask may work better and you may want to use that. And then you could apply these adjustments to very specific parts of the image. And you don't have to use a brush and try to brush everything in or anything like that you'll be able to uh, use the radial filter and really get precision with it. Thank you, everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon.